This podcast is brought to you by Kiwi Design, the leader in MetaQuest and VR accessories. And now you can deck out your device while supporting the podcast. The MetaQuest 2 is a great headset, but do you ever feel things could be a bit more comfortable? Well, we have the solution for you with lens protectors, controller grips, face covers, head straps, link cables, headset stands, and more, including my two personal favorites, the top version controller grips with added weight and an extended handle, and the Kiwi upgraded elite strap. Let's be real, we've all whacked our controller. Don't be the guy messaging Oculus support for your own mistake or waiting weeks for an out-of-stock controller. Visit the link in our show notes to prepare yourself today. After visiting the link in our show notes, make sure to use the promo code ROUGHTALKVR at checkout, all one word, to take full advantage of your savings. And make sure to click the link in our show notes so the podcast gets credit and you help support us. Remember, whatever you need, Kiwi has you covered. Hey, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR, and it's Monday. It's a new week, which you know what that means. Another, I'm clueless. What does that mean? <laughs> Another edition of Monday Morning News. You know, means there's a lot of people going to work, right? And then, yeah, including ourselves. Don't worry, we're not sitting here with our headset on at 10 a.m. playing, you know, the the luxurious life either. No, but you know, so it must be news day. Yes, it's always news on Monday, and in classic Monday Morning News of last week, as soon as we finish recording, the next day we wake up and already news is coming out. Even to start the week on Monday, the day the episode dropped, Mm -hmm. including, I mean, what I think was one of the highlights of last week, out of the blue, out of nowhere, big screen VR, the company, the the app, big screen, the company that makes, you know, the viewing media app, big screen, which we like. It's Mm -hmm. cool. You go in, you can watch movies in 3D. You can watch flat screen things. They have a lot of integrations with like YouTube with Amazon video. Seems you can stream to it. Yeah. I've seen some people. Yeah. You can connect it with your computer. So then what, you know, if you stream it on your computer, it'll go on to the media browser there. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool stuff. Amazing hard, amazing software. And out of nowhere, they came out that they're releasing a headset. So this software company is going to hardware now. Yeah, not just a headset, but the thing weighs as much as like a pair of socks. Yeah, here's the thing. It's 127 grams in weight, which is super lightweight, but it's hard to put that into reference. So, you know, let me pull up the weight real quick of the iPhone 14. It's 206 grams. Mm -hmm. So it weighs less than an iPhone 14. And then the iPhone 14 Pro Max, like the bigger version, is 240 grams. But even just just the regular size one. It's like a heavy pair of sunglasses Mm -hmm. it's dude it's half it's pretty much half the weight of the the bigger iphone double the cost half the weight well yeah it's i think what (laughs) 99.99 it doesn't come with controllers it's going to need a tracking base station so it's definitely targeting like a niche audience inside a niche but it doesn't sound like they have the expectations to sell five million of either no and i i think the idea behind it is is you buy their headset and you watch big screen which Mm -hmm. is why it's lightweight it's such a one-sided thing yeah it's like literally a glorified pair of like sunglasses viewing goggles uh but there's gonna be skiing goggles are bigger like the people that like sim racing it's gonna be great for you know those people and they don't need a controller anyway. They they just connect it with their wheel. Mm-hmm. But it is going to be compatible with with controllers as well. Uh, so it's not like you 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 can't use controllers either. Um, it's kind of targeting like that index, the Valve Index user base, you know. And a lot of the VR chat user base are going to love it. And what's interesting is when you order one, you have to take a photo <laughs> with an iPhone. So rest in peace, you know, Android users. But it does a, a scan or something like that, and they, eye spacing and all yeah, that. and yeah. they custom build it to your your dimensions of your face. So like you know, there's even some people <laughs> that that got to re- review it. Some like uh, you know, quote unquote YouTube or VR content creators, and like there's a couple of them that used each other's, and it went from a great experience on theirs to like, oh, that's extremely uncomfortable because it is a hundred percent designed for your face. No, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it kind of to that doesn't, I, I don't think that that's something you're looking to like mass produce and again, sell 5 million of, I don't think that's the intention. No, it's just another, I mean, they've obviously turned 
I mean, they're turning it into a profitable business other than just a, a software company. Yeah. 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 It's like, cause when you're, you know, how much did you pay for pay for big screen? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Mm-hmm. So it's like you sooner or later got to make money, but if you can, I mean, it's a steep price to ask, but for comfort reasons, like if you just want to chill in bed and, it doesn't, you know, it's a lot easier than yeah. Well, again, they're using targ- current day headsets. They're targeting a very niche user base of VR users. You know, again, the sim users, the social app users, the media browser users. Those mm-hmm. are the people that this is going to be targeted towards. And for those people, it's a great freaking headset. Yeah, uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see for us what happens for it, but. Yeah, for us, like me and you that fell in love with standalone VR, not needing, you know, base stations of Boards. tracking. And yeah. it's cordless, uh, but, you know, not needing base station, you know, having the controllers come with it, you know, just ready to go right off the top. You know, it's probably not targeted to, you know, us specifically, but again, no, there's... It's definitely not targeted but, to <laughs> but But I would I would love to try one for sure. Oh, my goodness. It sounds like the lightweight aspect of it. Mm-hmm. it I think that's the the headset design of the future. You that know, would also as, be a cool way to like if you were to bring, you know, like port your Xbox games into mm-hmm. just flat screen VRing. Mm-hmm. It's like it'd be a lot more comfortable with that kind of headset than it would be a, a modern mm-hmm. day one. And I, I saw some people being kind of critical. Or Quest 2, I should say. Yeah. I or saw any s- of the others. Which uh, <laughs> I saw some people being kind of weirdly critical of it saying like oh this is just going to cause headset confusion for new new consumers and stuff like that i was like listen no. <laughs> listen <laughs> look at it listen nobody is ever going to hear about this unless you are already in the vr niche this is a again a niche item inside of a niche there's not going to be people that you know google which headset should be my first one and they're going to get pointed towards you know the big screen VR no headset. but you know that People will start posting it in social media and stuff. So I just don't think it contributes to headset confusion or anything. I think when people I already know I'm gonna see it in one of the, the groups I follow, they're gonna post it and be like, Is this the end of the quest too? <laughs> you know, when No, it's not a competitor. No, it, but you know how most of those posts actually go. Here's how I kind of view the view the way uh, the the VR cycle for a new user is they're gonna get a quest too. And then, because it's the cheapest and just best introduction to VR, you know, they're going to, if they fall in love with it, they're either going to be content with standalone, or if they have the funds for more, then they're going to crave more. And then they're going to be able to go, well, what do I want better on my quest too? And if they want something, if it's the weight that's an issue or whatever, then they have the big screen option. If they just want something that's, you know, way more diesel, they have the index option, but you know, they don't start with that. At this point, I think people are starting with the Quest 2. And then once they're educated in the niche and they're in love with it, it's good to have these different options that fine tune specifically what they want, you know? I mean, let's be honest. The Quest 2 is like, it's it's priced for lower to middle class per se. Mm-hmm. And just intro too. So you know? it's like, there are people who go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on their intro into VR being beast experience because they just have the money Mm -hmm. where i just look at that whole quest too is like this is the first time that like affordably you can have vr absolutely but versus the i do think that there's a lot of people that have like gotten the quest 2 as their first headset and then gone on to go upgrade to something affordable exactly if it wasn't 500 bucks it would be just like all the others exactly that's well that's why i say say it's like that's kind of the path that but a thousand dollars for viewing glasses is a little it's a little steep for me and you absolutely but for people that that's what they specifically you know that that gets their jimmies going you know they're excited just so you know you don't have to own that to use big screen that would be the that would be the ultimate though if they yanked it Mm -hmm. well because the ceo was no we're just exclusive to our headset now he came out very critical of the oculus and meta ecosystem and says pretty much we're saying that he regrets for six years spending so much time. What on a on free eco- app? <laughs> on their on their ecosystem. Um so that's it's, unfortunate. It's, it's interesting. It was it's unfortunate. But I mean, hey, you want to change things, then you do it your way. Well, so. he said something that uh a couple of years ago he came out and said this that when they first launched Big Screen, uh apparently Meta was approached by them, or they were approached by Meta and they were like, Hey, you should, you know, join our team because we're going to build the equivalent and crush you, mm-hmm. if not. 
Mm-hmm. And he says that that's always rubbed him the wrong way since then. <laughs> well, well so I, I, will I, say, I will give props on him building their own headset. We'll just see how it performs and, and what I, the consensus is. I think big screen is probably my favorite media yeah, viewing it's, it's, app. I don't get much lag in there. And, you know, and I think that's there's some of the other ones I've tried. It's horrendous. So I'm not a meta hater. I'm actually, if anything, I'm overly supportive of meta, if anything. But in credit to big screen, I don't think meta has built the software equivalent for media browsing experience either. But no. it's, it is cool to see them enter the headset, the hardware market, I mm-hmm. will say. We'll keep our eye open. Yeah, and very, very unexpected. And uh, in kind of, you know, grim news, I'll say, you know, last week we discussed the shutting down of Echo VR, mm-hmm. uh, another multiplayer only game that had a much shorter lifespan. And unlike Echo VR, it wasn't free to play. It was a paid game. Nerf Ultimate Championship, which launched August of 2022, is shutting down in August of 2023. So it just is making it one year before. Uh, yeah, that's before pretty much canned. a that's a, a fuck the consumer situation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I that mean, one sucks. I mean, corporately, there's reasons why they're shutting down. But it's like, yeah, it's called the studio shutting down. Yeah, <laughs> that but one's it's little... it's amazing that they couldn't have sold it. Yeah, you know, because it's nerf. Yeah, I just don't. But the game was not well received, to be honest with you. There's a lot of people saying DOA, Dead on Arrival. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people loved it. Some, A lot of people weren't too big on it. If it's multiplayer only, you know, your game has oh. to be tight. Yeah. <laughs> and we also have so much variety now. I mean, mm-hmm. we still don't have enough, but we've got a, enough variety now where you start slipping or well, release something that's jank at the go. It's like... It, it's, you know, but well, I mean, it's, I'm bummed because it's a paid experience and yeah. it's literally been a year. I get mm-hmm. when it's been three years, but you're telling me nobody, like the game was so bad that not one person was like, can buy the rights to it or not even like the community. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like, oh, this sucks. But I'm like, I don't want to own that piece of shit, I but guess, I've heard people talk really good about it. Though. Yeah, I agree too. I, I was, so, I mean, I didn't check it out personally. I'll be no, 100% I'm glad, transparent. I, I am glad can still in buy the big it. picture that we yeah you know, why i know right that sucks yeah a year but it's like i also feel like i remember when swords of gargant swords of gargantua got pulled and the studio was just making a new game that's a hundred percent different situation than the studio yeah and they put that game back out didn't they yeah i didn't really want to talk about that yeah well no i mean it it's sits in up. it sits in my library and it yeah, will say uninstall forever. It's not back up yet. It's coming back up in March. Yeah. So it's like just because of the whole dirty I think like March fifth or something. That was really the first one that like that's when I took the stance of like, well, screw them. I don't care what they make. Mm-hmm. That one hurt me. Yeah. But I feel like it's a different animal when the studio is still existing. Yeah. Than when the studio has ceased to exist. Yeah. They're in the graveyard. Weird. Yeah. Unfortunately, but no, that so. sucks for Nerf. Yeah. I mean, I'm just and it sucks more for amazed people, that nobody would be willing to show out or make an offer to... Well, you said it best right off the start. You know, it sucks for Nerf, but it really sucks for the consumer Mm -hmm. who paid for it. Yeah, I get when it's free. If it's free, you know, I mean, how upset can you be? It's Mm -hmm. like, dude, you paid nothing for it. What do you have to cry about? You got got a week, a month, a couple of years. You can't cry over free, but... Or look, if in five, you know, three, four more years, Pop 1 shuts down and they put out Pop Pop 1, 2, or Pop 2, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. It's different. The game would have existed for what? You know, eight, Dude, nine years. Pop it's different is, when it's a year. Pop One is taking a beating right now. Uh, well, to be honest with you, it, a beating. Exactly what you just said about five minutes ago. Look at the variety of multiplayer games right now. Mm-hmm. You know, Gods of Gravity. Uh, geez, I don't even want to start making a list. You know, Drop Dead the Cabin just dropped this week. You know, there's so many. No, it's a lot of games. There's a lot of, not only games, a lot of multiplayer games coming too. So I think. Uh, there's only so many people playing VR headsets, you know, that, that, that base gets spread thinner and thinner between games as more and more multiplayer games come out. So unfortunately, rest in peace this upcoming August to Nerf. Nerf's been nerfed. <laughs> Going to nerf the nerf. And then uh, on other news, uh, you know, there's the public test server for meta updates. So there's the... The updates in the hardware or the software that everybody's on, like me and you, are on version forty nine right now. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the public release. But then there's something called the public test channel, 
the PTC, and you'll usually be like one one version ahead. And that's where they're, you know, tease experimental features. You get an idea of what's coming in the next update. Yeah. So they rolled out, you know, PTC version 50. So what we'll be probably getting in a month or so, whenever they decide to release it to the, the actual public. But when they rolled it out, one smart user on Reddit, props to them, because they did the same thing that you should always do when you get an update, which is they went to the experimental features of their settings. Because things come and go there, you know? Yeah, of course. You might see it for a week and then it might be gone, whatever. But they noticed when they updated to version 50 in the, the PTC that they had an option for direct touch panels. So right now, if you're using your controller or hand tracking, you either use like a laser pointer on your controller. That's exactly what I call it. Yeah, it, that's the only... It's that's, my laser pointer. Yep. It's definitely not my finger. No. Or if you're <laughs> using hand tracking, there's also a laser that comes from your fingers, but you pinch to select. Um. And, you know, if there's any bit of shakiness in your hand, sometimes it can be a little janky. But now they're adding, either if you're using your controller, and, you're, you know, it'll be your avatar hand, or if you're using hand tracking, you can now just touch the screen directly or type directly. I think that for the controller, I'll probably stick with the laser pointer because mm-hmm. that's just intuitive. Like, that makes sense. But anytime I'm using hand tracking, to me, that's going to be a game changer because I hate pinching for the, the menu selection. Yeah, once I got used to, and as hand tracking's improved over the the past few years. Yeah, I won't say I hate it, but I don't, I'm like much more fluid mm-hmm. when I'm moving around. With, but the 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 reasons to use hand tracking are pretty slim. So, I um, mean, whatever. So, so sometimes I'll use hand tracking a lot, especially if I'm pulling files out of my headset. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's kind of annoying every time you put in your plug in your headset to the computer you have to approve the yeah the message on your headset you can't do just do it. a yeah you can't just do it every time and then it's annoying then i gotta put it on i usually use hand tracking for that yeah or if i'm putting on my headset and just doing quick you know updates you know starting to select stuff that stuff that's usually when i'll do hand tracking just navigating my menu when i'm not actually playing yeah i only do it if a game calls for it generally in like my home area then i was thinking like wow if if they really do push the push the push buttons, it's gonna be one of those you're better off resetting your play space anytime before you press your buttons. Cause if you're like me and you, who when we play, we move around a mm-hmm. lot, you move back and then pull up your home screen, it's gonna be way in front of you. Mm-hmm. You're gonna walk up to it and put your finger right into the T V. <laughs> It'll save your controller though. A broken bone is probably cheaper than a new controller. So. Well, yes, always respect the guardian outline. That is Jeez, rule number yeah. one. Yep. <laughs> but I think if, you know, and I don't type it's a, a lot. It's a cool feature, VR. though. Yeah, there's potential. I can type fast with the, the controllers. Yeah, you're could, saying you've gotten good with it. Yeah, I do the right and left at the... You'll have to test out when it's on the, oh, the yeah, public dude. server. The Not the public test server, the, the public... Real, the real public version. The masses. Yes. When we get a piece of it. Yeah, no, the keyboard aspect is is huge. Mm-hmm. If doing hand tracking typing, because the hand tracking, it's, it's gotten crisp. Not for nothing if you're doing any sort of programming. Yeah. Or and like you, some of the meeting room spaces where you can have your laptop and mm-hmm. it'll pull it up to actually be able to click, 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 click on mm-hmm. a virtual would be cool. Yeah. Again, I think for the having the control in your hand, nah, doesn't really make any difference for me. For me, this is more of a highlight of hand tracking, in my opinion. No, it's just the next step. And then, you know, it's going to be the grab and move files around. Mm-hmm. Like, so, you know, old, old science fiction movies that said we'd be doing this now anyways. Yes, we're getting bet. I think that this helps with the productivity aspects. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool stuff. The, it always comes down to productivity. Mm-hmm. So your employees will thank you for this. So one of our favorite games, Gods of Gravity, mm-hmm. they just had a massive update. Very respectable. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm actually going to pull up on their, their announcement, everything that they did. I won't read the whole thing because, oh, my goodness, on their Discord, they posted everything that came in that update, and it was ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's a novella. And what's actually cool is in our interview with them, if you go back and, and listen when, when we talked to the developers, at one point, they flipped the switch on us and asked us a question. And they were like, hey, what would you like add to the game or something like that? You know, What suggestions or feedback do you have? And... If I remember correctly, just about the only things we had said was a co-op mode. And then we had also suggested adding three-star ratings to the campaign missions because it's a simple thing that adds a lot of replayability. And in this update, 
came a co-op mode. That's not just a co-op mode. It's 15 co-op, like, dedicated campaign missions. So mm-hmm. it's pretty much a whole whole co-op campaign. And if it's, you know, complete transparency, we haven't beaten the campaign. We've done a couple missions, but so far it seems like it's following the same... Uh, progression? Yeah, as in... Difficulty progression? It, it starts... It gets harder as you advance through the missions. Well, we also did it on the hardest. Yes, well, that's Default. a new, that's a new thing for the for the campaigns. They added difficulty setting with that's easy. That's an old new thing. Old new thing. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. didn't notice that on, on until the last, this one. The last update, what more than a month ago, mm-hmm. is when you could now change the the campaign difficulties. Campaign difficulties. Okay, I, I missed that because when the God of Destruction pumped out, we just started doing multiplayer yeah. rounds. I didn't even mess with the and campaign we had again. Finished all the campaign missions the campaign missions before that came out yeah so, so why would i go back but okay so that's a thank yeah, you for so correcting old, me on that that's an old new but it does carry over to the co-op one too the correct. co-op's the same way correct so yeah you have easy normal and hard and we did it on hard destroyed the first mission effortlessly of and course. then already on the second mission the first time we did it we were cocky at that point because of how easy we did the first mission we got messed up well, we got destroyed we got beat up no, we got these, bullied these new maps they made too for the co-op is freaking awesome yeah and we, it's true co-op because you each technically have your own little starting base one of them is the true home base but the one next to it it's just as good as a home base i will say yeah it has really good production because they give you a couple moons right next to it that see i don't know they're just generous with the amount of production that goes to it oh yeah and the um my biggest beef with the way we would play it, which is technically the right way, but mm-hmm. it's like one person's kind of standing around for, you know, three, four minutes doing piss. When we would do the Mickey Mouse co-op, you know, the yeah. the MacGyver co-op. But you know? it's it was it was set that way because yeah. you could join the same team. Mm-hmm. I the first time we ever played it that way, I expected to have my own planet. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah yep. so this is now how we were expecting it to be. But the AI is no joke. It's oh, it's treating it that. like it's treating it like a co-op. Dude, we got murked because you know we figured out the single player AI pretty good. Mm-hmm. This AI is prepared for there to be two of you. It's it's hard to explain, but it felt yeah. Both the enemies are double teaming you <laughs> yeah, no, while was, fighting each other. It's we were like, fighting a two front war. I was, was like, tough. all right, they kicked up the AI notch. Yet, oh for yeah. Sure. And I remember before we picked uh, the first mission, you're like, let's go straight into hard. And I was like, ooh, somebody's cocky over here. And then Mm -hmm. we dominated. And I was like, oh, shit, you're right. That was different in the second mission. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's cool because it's, you know, as far as setting up a co-op game to play against living people, it's Mm -hmm. it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And like you said, the maps are just designed very cool. Like we flipped through all 15 of them and some of them were real funky. Like they did a they did a really good job creating them. They're, we they're do unique. a group one. I'm already calling slush matic so yeah, <laughs> that's my first pick. And also, you want my ass good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, we, we gave a, a small fight for about two minutes, mm. and then no, I threw a hail mary. I should have I should have went in on him with you though. That's the if, thing. If you had double teamed him, well, we we were all playing one v one v one. So it's like, but righteously, you you probably should have, mm-hmm. and then you know I would have had shit. And mm-hmm. then you probably could have taken me. So. Mm-hmm. Or I could have attacked Came your home close. base while you were I attacking had his home him. Base. The countdown had begun. Mm-hmm. No, but I absolutely should have gone in he there. He came as back and yeah. just put an end to that shit real quick. But they also <laughs> they also changed the name of the what was the map creator edition before. Mm-hmm. It's now just called Ultra. But none of yeah. the perks are you nothing didn't lose changed. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Anything you bought or paid for is still bought and paid for. It's just the naming of it. And then they also said that they ranked their overhaul, you know, uh, with new rewards, availability, maps, and more. Uh, there's five different ranks, each with their own unique badge. So that's pretty cool stuff, too. Mm-hmm. And now there's team voice chat. So, you know, the game does spatial audio, but before everybody could hear everybody. Now you can do team no, chat. Everybody could hear everybody if you're around somebody. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but now you can set it for, now there's team chat as well in the audio setting. So if you're doing like co-op modes and you're facing other real people and you'd rather just coordinate just your team, you don't really have to go in the Oculus party chat or anything like that. You can still just change, now you can change your settings to in-game. I'm sorry, into uh, to, mm-hmm. to party chat. So that's pretty cool. So... I don't know. Good stuff from the Gods of Gravity devs. It was pretty cool to see the only suggestions yeah, we recommended. Dude, I'm older than their their dev team. Combined. Yeah. Although I don't know, the Steve guy might 
throw it off. I didn't don't remember Steve's age. No, he definitely throws it off. So he might be the but catalyst the two, in there. The two programmers? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yep. I think I got like eight years on. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan and Jack. Dude, I can't believe two 21-year-old, 21-year-olds pumped that out. How f- Dude, we interviewed them it's a month even, ago. That's ridiculous. A month ago. To be that young and that be means like, that, I already have a game on the store. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that, how far along yeah, into the update of this do you think they were when they had already talked to us? So that that means that's that when, probably done. So that means that when we had told them the two suggestions, they're like, "Oh, they, they yeah, checked, already done." We're just you know, also QAing think, it. I also think they're the type when they get an idea where they they figured out a solution to a problem, mm-hmm. it's taken care of within hours. It's mm-hmm. not a oh well, you know, we'll we'll put the, we'll get to this Monday. I mm-hmm. no, it's like. I have to believe it because from firsthand experience, it's yeah. like these guys are really proactive. So. Yeah, they're very quick to, to squash bugs, to pump mm-hmm. out updates. So they're they're hardworking. They're very talented devs. Like this so, is yeah. one of the best games on the Quest Store. I'll argue with them till I'm blue in the face on the pricing model because I think they deserve ten dollars. No, flat. nine nine. It should be nine ninety nine flat. Yep. Yeah. Boom. I think if everybody buy the a, buy the DLC see, for four ninety nine. Yeah. Whatever. Keep it reasonable. Oh, and what's interesting about the co-op campaign too? It it was something like, uh, I think it's like you need to have the the ultra version or something like that to host it. Yeah, in but order if to someone look, doesn't, you can still still they invite can still them play over. It. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Like they're trying to push you to to buying it. Yeah, if the room owner has ultra, they can invite anyone to play the co-op maps with them. So yeah, if you didn't pay for the game, you can still get to experience the mm-hmm. the other part of it as long as your friend has it. But again, this, they deserve the money. I'll uh, say it till I'm blue in the face. But you I know don't what? think I don't think nine ninety nine. I don't think anybody who's played it would balk at the price. Mm-hmm. And I think that's still cheaper than the fourteen ninety nine that they probably should be charging. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it's more incentive to buy it and then just pay the extra five dollars for the additional shit. Let's be real. There's easily twenty dollars worth of content in this game, but I just know their philosophy, and you could never convince <laughs> huh. them to. There is now. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's just going to keep the growing. the update, definitely. So I hope, you know what? I hope I'm wrong though. I hope this team is rolling in the money due to a high user base. Cause you, as soon as the game launched, you saw the user base pew, mm-hmm. about with the online users. I hope it's maintaining. I hope a lot of people are rightfully paying for it. Uh, just hats off to them. Great, great dev team over at Trask Games. And I don't think it'll be the last time that we have them on the podcast too with the rate no. they're pumping out updates. No. So huge, huge props. I'm like so excited to, to to beat all 15 of those missions. Here's the thing. Do we scale down down to normal? Or do we just gut it out no. on hard? Just Let's do it on it hard. Up. Yeah, I love that mentality. Let's go, baby. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I guess back to a little bit of the, the grim news and kind of vague, unspecified numbers. Pico announced that they're... <laughs> They're also getting some layoffs. You know, the whole tech industry has been hit with layoffs. You name mm. it, any tech giant. You know, they're owned by ByteDance, the the owners of TikTok. You know, it's been documented in Western media quite a bit about China's current economic economic situation. It should be no surprise that their, you know, their companies are are facing some layoffs. Pico just said that they're laying off a small number. I think it's in the hundreds, but there weren't really a whole bunch of details about it no of course not and you know that should also come as no surprise following the report like what three months ago that the pico 4 undersold numbers by quite a bit they were expecting over a million sales and it only sold a hundred thousand or something like that but i don't know what brain i don't know i don't i don't understand the logic to to expect a million like that no, anyway I mean, so somebody knew something or else yeah. you wouldn't have, i mean what sucks too with that is another another tech company in china who was going to get yep. involved Tenc- tencent yep they're a big they're chinese done. manufacturer they're like no we're not gonna they cut their whole xr unit yep. so they were going to be working on a head headset but now they're they're cutting that but also it might not mean that they're like example they might just be changing direction of their xr well example instead of going from making your own headset it might be a, they might be going to a partnership with bite dance example you know what i mean just kind of changing direction of it well they should probably say that then yeah well i don't know if it was them (laughs) like we're gonna re we're gonna restructure this not Mm -hmm. just we're no longer gonna be part of it not well i don't know if they put out that they laid off their whole 
XR unit or if it was like one of those analysts, you know, insider reports. You know, it was got a on hold one of, of the same. It was on one of the same Pico articles. Mm-hmm. Like really, like the sentence right afterwards. Mm-hmm. Because but, Pico does layoffs in Tencent because they're kind of you know people kind of interlock a lot of different Chinese large conglomerates. You know, mm. it's like to I don't know to to a lot of Western journalism, it's like Pico, Tencent. What's the difference? You I know? Don't know, it seemed it those seemed, are those are two it seemed diff- as legit as I guess our media yeah. because would have written it. So because <laughs> I saw the same thing as you, they were putting those in like the same headline, but it's like those are two completely different stories. It's just so weird to put them in the same headline yeah, it together. A, it's a throw-in. Like, they're just bundled together. It's like, those are different companies, but I don't know. Because let's like, be honest, if it wasn't tied in with the Pico name, you wouldn't give a shit, yep. right? I yeah. mean, on this side of the world, yeah. you'd be like, okay, never even heard of that company, but we all have heard of Pico mm-hmm. now, so it's like, mm-hmm. all right, I've got your attention with letting you know that they're well doing a little bit of layoffs, and now I'll let you know that this company that you really weren't exposed to is not going to enter the market and so you don't even know what you're really missing well it's also a i think pico is a great example of when you're deep in the forest you know you forget how deep in the forest you are meaning like pico is a household name to me and you right Mm -hmm. probably to a lot of like example the users are in a discord if we said pico they know what we're talking about if i walked up to any one of my friends and i said do you know what pico is I, like no which pokemon is that yeah nobody <laughs> nobody in the world would know not nobody in the world no, nobody in my real life unit of people i know would know what pico is but if i walked up to them asked them what a quest is they would know mm. you know it's like pico is a, a household name to us deep in the niche but the reality is to the general consumer no nobody really knows what pico is well, it doesn't have to it's not yeah. for sale not for sale in the united states yeah. unfortunately yes um so which is probably where some of that production number came from was the understanding that they'd have a North America release and it yeah, just has without without North America they're hasn't not selling been able to happen. So and, and let's be real, I know a lot of the quote unquote, you know, exactly what I'm saying, the niche VR community that it's Pico's a household name to that don't have access to the headsets that if mm-hmm. they launch in the United States they they would they would sell, they would buy it. That's another it's another option for people to Mm-hmm. Look, I think anybody can make a headset right now, and somebody will buy it mm-hmm. if it's priced well. Mm-hmm. But since it was pretty comparable to the the Quest, Quest, yeah, yeah, I mean, but you know, they're still pushing forward with their store and shit. And a hundred people is not the end of the world. Yeah, and like their start, they've the got production some, cut is probably the yeah they've gotten some uh, some exclusive content or temporary exclusive, like example, Peaky Blinders. Mm-hmm. You know, based off the was Netflix it? show, yeah. Uh, it's launched on Pico right now in early access, but it's coming to the Quest later, but it's available now on Pico. That's how they're using, they're going to use it as figure out what the bugs are. <laughs> Fix and, all the little glitches, all the little issues, and then we'll release it. And it's like exactly what you said. Pico's still moving forward. They just became what's known as OpenXR compliant. Uh, so basically like the, to get your your game running on their headset is now compliant with like, general industry standards that's also followed on on the majority of other headsets so basically for developers porting their head their games over to pico it's going to get much easier because they're all following the same framework i'd like them to be able to sell in america but yeah whatever well because exactly that my fight they're set they sold like what something like mid hundred thousand uh but if they launch in the the u.s i think that there were no their number could be a lot closer to a million definitely but it without that you will never know market yeah it's tough. It's tough. But <laughs> in other news, a couple, couple more things to discuss. Uh, a game that's been available on the App Lab store that I haven't really checked out yet on App Lab, and I'm disappointed because I always like to see the evolution of it, you know, kind of in early access or, you know, its initial stages on App Lab, and then compare it to the official release. But, you know, whatever. I'm always happy in the end to see a App Lab developer move to the official store. A game with a, a pretty good following, Arcade, A-R-K hyphen A-D-E. So it's not like, you know, the, the word Arcade. If anybody's going to type it in after, you're going to find it wrong if you just spell Arcade. Uh, it's coming to the official Quest store on March 2nd. So yeah, congratulations it's, to them. Some hype for that, so mm-hmm. we'll have to definitely check it out. I saw Shoes in our Discord getting hella hyped about it, I'll say. He got pretty hyped. 
Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him posting the the Reddit post right away, and yeah, I clicked yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. So good for them. Again, I I missed the opportunity to check them out early days, you know, but I'll definitely check them out when they launch in the official quest store as it's what, two weeks away, yep. you know, might as well wait at this point, but just overall, yeah, huge congratulations to them. I don't see any reason to look for an early access release. No, not at that point, you know, <laughs> yeah. especially because like, what's the most stripped down version of this you got? Yeah. Well, especially because, you know, I don't know. I haven't really had issues with games that migrate from the Mm-mm. app lab store to the official store. But why chance it? I'll just wait, you know. <laughs> but overall, yeah, huge congrats to Arcade. You know, I'll definitely check them out when it launches on March 2nd on the official store. Ooh. <laughs> and we got a couple more things to talk about, namely just two games that are coming out soon. Uh, the Light Brigade and Mixture, you know. But before we go over those real quick, I want to give a shout out to our Patreon members who are on our Discord champion shout out tier. So... On our Discord, I'm sorry, on our Patreon, we have a couple of different tiers. You know, we have a support in one. We have one that gives the just support in one. You're just supporting, you know, no real benefits. You just want to help us go full time. Uh, the next one, though, is a on-air shout out. And you get access to an exclusive Discord chat room that also, you know, we run kind of exclusive stuff. Example, maybe we will ask for your feedback about something going forward, kind of run some ideas by. And we'll also run some exclusive giveaways. Like we're running a giveaway for some keys for Barbaria. The Patreon peeps, the Patreon Discord champion group, they have their own, you know, own giveaway going. So it's it's much better chance to win, I'd say, too. Statistically, so, yeah. Because <laughs> the others are, are pretty stacked. <laughs> so, you know, overall, though, it's a cool time in our Discord. So if you haven't joined that yet, even if you don't know how to use Discord, trust me. I didn't either. We will figure it out as we go. Visit our show notes, our episode description. Uh, you know, what's this show or what's this episode about? There you can find our Patreon link, our Discord link, all that fun stuff. And our members of Patreon on the shout out tier for, again, the Discord champion. We have Amelia. We have Crispy. And we have our boy Shoes. Which also, keep an eye out on the Rough Talk VR website. Mm -hmm. because, you know, Shoes and I have both been pumping out some articles. I've been doing a little bit more of the new stuff, and Shoes has been doing, like, what I would say is really good opinion things. So he wrote some articles on his opinion on the Quest Pro controllers, the unboxing and his impressions on the tracking and stuff like that. He just dropped an article of, like, five App Lab recommendations. So good stuff there. You know, keep an eye out on the Rough Talk VR website. And they even launched, like, an Amazon store on it, too. If you go to our website, you can find all these different items that it's just another way to help support the podcast. We do get a cut of the sales made through those clicks. It's at no additional cost to you, but example, we're sponsored by Kiwi, but there's not only Kiwi products on that Amazon page. So if you want to help support us, but example, you want the Bobo head strap, go click there and boom, you know, everybody wins, right? So in the last news, uh, again, there's a game coming out this month called Mixture. February 23rd. Right around the corner. Right around the corner. This week. This week. And it, based off the trailer, it looks like a top-down puzzler, almost, I guess, for lack of a better term. <laughs> like, there looked like some it's combat. It's a top-down sun. Yeah. It's, it, I can never judge. Based off of trailers? Based off a of trailer. Especially the more. More recently? Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just like. Just legit, just run me a minute of game play. I don't give a shit what it is. Well, here's a great example. Those snap pictures and quick cameras. and One of our favorite new games to drop, mm-hmm. Barbaria. We watched the trailer and went, I don't know. Yeah, been Man. there, done that. Yeah, but then we played it. And it's Haven't done that. <laughs> freaking like, fuck, one of our favorite games in the last like six months to release. So I think that it was kind of hard to tell based off the trailer, but they said one interesting thing in it. They said self co-op. Yeah, I don't know what that means. No. In fact, I'm going to go to the store page just to make sure. Uh, I want to see if it says single player or co-op on the actual store listing. Because when I heard self co-op, I was like, does that mean I just control two people? That's kind of how I understood it. Or do you control it twice? Like 
do like, one run by yourself and then the next run with yourself. Yeah, there's a lot of different things in that. But again, it's it's kind of things like that about warding on trailers and, and snapshots. I don't really know what's going on in a lot of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. example. It says game mode, single user. But then it says self co-op. It's just weird, you know? Mm-hmm. But it looks like a fun game. Could be. I just didn't. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll know as soon as we play it. Because mm-hmm. I'm intrigued. I mean, I, I like the whole top down thing, but. I think it can work really good in VR, and it looked like there was a lot of strategy element in it. That's why I almost said puzzler. I didn't. I was yeah, trying to find a good know. description for it. It's going to be interesting because there did look like some combat too, right? Mm-hmm. But it looked. But like, I don't know. I don't know. Those trailers aren't doing justice to the products anymore. No, because then I go to the store page and I actually read it, and I and I'm like, this looks a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely going to have to check it out. You know, keep your eye out for mixture dropping this week, and then there's another game. Kind of back to the trailer thing, I guess, but it's also coming out this month called The Light Brigade. And this game has been getting so much hype in our Discord. I see it on social media, on Twitter. Everybody is pumped for The Light Brigade. You watch the trailer, in my opinion. The doesn't trailer, do it justice. No, the trailer doesn't get me hyped based off of the way people's reception seems to be so positive in that it's a, it's a roguelike game which I was never a fan of flat screen. But in VR, they can work. Some of my my more favorite experiences have been, you know, roguelites. I'm on, I'm always on the cusp mm-hmm. of like, I like it, but I don't like it. Sometimes it's just that, you know, okay, just do it again, do it again, do mm-hmm. it again. So, But then there's ones like Mother Gunship Forge. Yeah, there's examples that, that get me, and then there's other times where it just flat out just doesn't. So doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Yeah, but this one has a lot of hype, and it seems to be because the gun physics are a big highlight of the game. You know, the gun mechanics, the shooting aspect of it, and that was shown off a lot in the trailer. Yeah. But then there seemed to be like a little bit of an eerie, almost into the radius vibe to it. You know what I mean? They had that eerie music. Your guy is like praying his hands together to open doors. I don't know. <laughs> the vibe seemed a little bit eerie. So we'll we'll see about that. So... Just to wrap up this episode, two new games coming out very soon, Mixture and The Light Brigade. Mixture, I haven't heard a whole bunch of hype on, but nope. I think I'm a little bit more intrigued on Mixture than The Light Brigade, I'll be honest with you. But The Light Brigade's getting more hype. Yeah. Just Mixture has... I, you know, I want everything, so I can't... <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie. Yeah, you're still <clears throat> waiting on... Uh, you want you want not for broadcast so bad. Yeah. It's killing you that you don't have it yet. Yep. It's killing you. You talk you, at least once a week. I hear it from you. Yeah, like, no, I don't know what's going on. No, not for broadcast yet. Like no, not for haven't. sale. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for that one though. It will. I you know, and I'm I'm self hyping it in my head to set myself up for disappointment at this point. Because mm-hmm. you just see something and you go like, I really want that. So yeah, I, I'm trying to trying to do better, <laughs> but it's failing. <laughs> And then Survivor Man should be right around the friggin' corner. Mm-hmm. Same with a game like Gambit. That's right around the corner, Dude, I, too. I've, Q1 2023, whatever. Survivor Man, I've been, we've been watching this for over a year. We've been right? watching since it wasn't even like full landscapes. It was like 3D models mm-hmm. with like blueprint going through it. Like, you know, they still had like the grid lines. So freaking bad. Yeah, dude. They put a lot of production into it. So I'm expecting. So it, Just from what I've seen through the evolution of it, mm-hmm. I'm expecting it to be really good. I heard somebody who tried it during Steam. There's a Steam Fest with like a bunch of demos mm-hmm. for upcoming games, including some VR games. And Survivor Man was on it, the PC VR version. And somebody that I saw, they tried it, and they were like, freaking the highlight, the highlight of the Steam Fest for the VR section. Yeah, see. see. It's like the studio, we've seen it. They put in so much labor and love and hard work into that game for how long has it been now? It's pretty much since we started the podcast. Yeah, when it, when I first saw them on IG, and I think they, they literally had like 15 followers or mm-hmm. something. I'm like, I was already hooked. I'm like, I, you just got to keep making it. Well, you saw the official Les Mills association with it. Like he's, he's in the game somehow. It's not Les Mills. I'm sorry. Les Strauss. <laughs> Les, that's funny. Wow. A year ago I'd never even heard of Les Mills. That and is now I can't say now funny. I can't say the word less without it 
being less mills. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. No, definitely not a workout survival no. game. Go out there and burn those calories so you don't freeze to death. Yeah, no, then. but he he's actually like I don't know his role in the game if he's like a narrator, if you play as him. But I've seen he's them like definitely narrating. I've seen some three D scans of him being done. I think he's teaching you how like, to survive. How to survive and then you're put into the situation. And don't quote me on it because I just, can't I cannot get my grubby paws on this to mm-hmm. save my life. All the begging and pleading to that studio is not going to get it in my lap. I'll admit it. I think I even asked him a while ago, like month, like six months ago. You know, wouldn't say no to early release on or early access on this. <laughs> you know, I just I die in a friggin' play it. It's got the elements that I really want to try in VR, mm-hmm. and if they pull it off with the official Survivor Man branding, mm-hmm. come on, man, Survivor Man VR. That's a headset seller. You follow us on on IG. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Dude, that I've dude, seen him post about it sometimes. He is always traveling. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's such a real human being. Like I've seen him, I think he was at a concert a year ago, and he posted on his IG, like, I'm at this concert, this row, this section, stop on by and say hi. Like who the hell does that? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he's just a real human being. So, mm-hmm. But my big concern with it is going to be how much surviving is in it. And like, you know, are you finished in an hour? Mm-hmm. Are there going to be? I'm already at, see what I'm asking for. Are there going to be updates <laughs> and and more survival scenarios in production? But these guys use like full production. Yeah, motion track. You're like, uh-huh. okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I would be shocked if there's only an hour or so content right? in it, based off of the amount of love I've seen being put dude. into it. But it's got all the makings to make me one happy dude. Yeah, I think it's going to be a hit when it hits the store when it's when it releases. I'm so excited for it. Yeah, I agree. So, 2023, man, I keep talking about it. We have the Quest 3 dropping. We have so many good games coming out. Ghostbusters. That should be dropping. Gambit. Oh, Survivor, man, like you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, not for broadcast. What was it? Oh, my goodness. I'm slipping on the name. Is it? It's not Everslot. Oh, is that the name? No. I have no clue what you're talking about. Shoot. I'll, I'll, think, of, <laughs> I'll think of the name in just a I minute. I keep thinking Everlast. Yeah, I know, right? Unfortunately. Uh, but no, there's so many good games coming in 2023 that have been yeah, announced r- last year. It's ridiculous. Again, and I think... A good ridiculous. You know, Quest 3 is a day one buy for me. And yeah. I'm so, you know... Don't care what I gotta do. And I'll be messaging a VR optician the day the Quest 3 is announced. Like, hey, do you have early access to this? And do you already have your lens adapters? Because I love my VR optician eyeglasses or like lens adapters. Like, yeah. I can't imagine not having them as a glasses user. Ooh. It's the best. <laughs> hey, now you have a. You do, so you wear. It's not a prescription. It's no, reading glasses. Reading right? glasses. Yeah. Hmm. So it doesn't. I don't need them for for headsets. For headsets. No, it would probably actually make the experience worse. Right. Yep. Yeah. You still you'll still stick with your plain old lenses, but yeah. it's it's still good pieces of peace of mind for you to, like your lens will never get damaged. Oh no, because yeah, that was the whole reason I got the. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it would have been like I don't even need those. But no, to know that my original lenses are protected, mm-hmm. <laughs> they haven't even been exposed to the elements in forever. No, just take them off now and then, and give it a good, good little wipe down on the inside, micro microfiber wipe down, mm-hmm. and pop them back on. But yeah, I can't say enough for if people who have to wear glasses like me, like all the time, it's so worth it. It's so worth it because mm-hmm. screw that lens spacer. You're gonna scratch Dude, even your if lenses. You don't wear glasses, just. Anything could you could be you could stick your finger in your headset by accident. Yeah, you know it's like it's easier to clean those lenses too. I have so much more peace of mind wiping them than I did the. You can be a little more aggressive. (laughs) You get what I'm saying by that? Because you know it's not your real lens. Oh yeah, I don't feel like I'm wiping anything crucial off. Yeah, a hundred percent. So yeah, I I, that's probably I say it all the time. I top three accessories: headset, like power adapter, like like the Kiwi one we have Mm -hmm. with a pro adapter with the charger. In it, which I noticed on their store that they have a, now a charger one with the audio strap on it too combined. I was like, whoa, when did that it's come out? Because uh, that was kind of what we were saying when we tried it. Like, that would be cool if they combined both of them. Because I don't want to pick audio or power charging because I'm going to pick power n- 10 times out of 10. Mm-hmm. I want my extra play, but the extra audio is nice too. Um, so huge, huge props to them. But yeah, having an uh, improved head strap with a charger on it, essential. Better grips, essential, and if your glasses wear, or even if not, just to protect it, those optician lenses, huge. That's when your headset's pimped out. You know? <laughs> it's 
So I can't disagree with that. So anything else you wanted to go over today or that about wrapping no, up? No, I just some stuff coming around the horizon, but we'll talk to it when the horizon comes. Mm-hmm. So. No, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I am laughing at my quote of when I, when I was talking about cars having mobile hot spots. Yeah. And, you and said I called hot, it hot, hot box. box. Yep. You know, just know where my mind went, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same thing with me and saying it's less It's my mills. generation. It's it like, says you know, less. You say less, and then all of a sudden I said mills, you know, and same thing yeah. with hot. You know, you said hot, and then. Somehow the word box came out. Came out and said a hot, hot box. Spot. So, no, new cars are not being sold with the hot box capability. They're already built in with that. Yeah. <laughs> the hot spot capabilities. Yeah. So, uh, one last time I'll say, you know, definitely go check out our online communities, our Patreon, our subreddit, our, our Discord, especially the Discord. Discord's popping. You know, we got a great community in there. It's very welcoming. Our mods like, you know, Amelia, King, King Canuck, Shoes, they're they're kicking ass in there. It's it's a great mm-hmm. job. Like I said, very welcoming. We got a ton of game meetups, a whole bunch of different categories of discussion, some awesome pet pictures. Come on, who doesn't like to see a nice dog? So definitely go check that out. Go join the Patreon. Help us go, you know, full time. Cha cha cha. And we'll be back with you on Wednesday with the review of Drop Dead the Cabin. Which spooky. <laughs> spooky or hard. Oh my goodness. But we'll talk about that on Wednesday. So hope you enjoy this episode and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> ciao, Take ciao. Care.